Coming up in this FinCast, most likely the greatest single display of purely aquacultured fish ever. I use the Kimapir Elite and uh, Nuvo 16 and you know, a couple teaspoons on each, in a bag on each side and change it out like once a month and it just keeps everything pure and clean, no phosphates, everything's good to go. Uh, it's pretty much a worry free system because of the Kimapir. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Man, have I got a treat for you today. I'm just back from the Global Pet Expo in Florida. It's the nation's largest expo where dog, cat, and yes, fish businesses all come together and do business for three days. And it's absolutely a gorgeous uh, event. Uh, and I want to talk today about a single aquarium at the event in the Chemipure booth. It was a 500 gallon aquarium. Everything from the live rock to the fish and corals are aquacultured or raised in a controlled environment. And this is a 500 gallon aquarium and to my knowledge it's the only time that all these different fish have come together in such a beautiful display and this aquarium was absolutely a showstopper. It had people from all over the world at the Global Pet Expo and nobody could take their eyes off of this fish tank. Now I interviewed a number of people from the rising tide who can tell the story about aquacultured fish and why this aquarium is so amazing and, and kind of what the effort is there way better than I can. So we'll let them tell the story of aquaculturing fish in this particular aquarium in their own words. This year's Global Pet Expo, we decided we would take our 500 gallon large display tank and create a really beautiful ecosystem with all aquacultured corals, all aquacultured fish, mainly from Florida suppliers that really would set the example of what a marine ornamental aquarium can look like in, in an aquaculture environment. Um, Kemi Pure has created an amazing tank full of aquacultured species that are sustainable for the aquarium trade that are alternatives to their wild caught counterparts. Oh well, exhibits like this are fantastic because what they do, they increase the exposure, they allow people that are just passively passing by to ask questions about what's going on in here, what are these fish about. Um, so Rising Tide has been an initiative since 2009. Um, since 2009, we have aquacultured almost 30 species of marine ornamental fish. Well, I always think about it as an insurance policy. Uh, even if some of those wild capture fisheries are sustainable, uh, we never know what's going to happen with the oceans in the future. And of course, developing those insurance policies to make sure that we have these fish around for future generations is always uh, important to us. So I've always recognized how important it is to support the growing of marine ornamental fish uh, so that we really can help to conserve the natural reefs and not necessarily have to take all fish from the natural reefs. Plus, when a fish is bred in captivity, it's already acclimated to life in an aquarium, eats prepared foods, it's used to humans, and um, it's just really a happy fish. One of the goals of Rising Tide is to share information. One of our first successful fish was the pork fish. SeaWorld donated the eggs for the pork fish. They were successfully reared from the University of Florida. Once we discovered the technology on how to rear pork fish, we gave that information to Fisheye Aquaculture, who then proceeded to mass produce the fish, and they are now available wholesale through Seagrass Farms. The most recent fish that we aquacultured successfully uh, is the reef butterfly fish. It was done at the University of Florida Indian River Research and Education Center and there are currently two in the Kemi Pure tank. And then of course University of Florida is is really dedicated to their fish farming industry and that is, a lot of those producers are here today and a lot of those producers are, are interested in producing these fish uh, for money and for sale. It's amazing to, to see all these fish together and, and really kind of see the end product of what Rising Tide Conservation is hoping to do. We are supporting that direction and, and, and basically publicizing it through this beautiful educational window to the sea. And we've learned a lot in the past couple years and with the support of Rising Tide and other institutions like that, uh, we hope to have similar advances and much more advances coming in the future. 
So it's important because there are some unsustainable methods with uh, wild caught fish. And so we are hoping to have aquacultured alternatives to those wild caught species. Or, you know, we always like to uh, keep those fish species that are out in the wild uh, in, in their natural habitats and, and not tinker with those uh, eco ecological uh, systems too much. The exhibit looks wonderful. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely pro aquaculture. Uh, everything looks very beautiful. And uh, really, so it, it's a very exciting time here in the past couple years. We've had a lot of advances, uh, not just with the tangs, but with other fish species. We are so grateful for Kami Pier's support. Um, they have been with us since the beginning, and they're an amazing sponsor. We, um, we really, truly appreciate everything that they've been able to help us do, and we are so grateful that they can put together an amazing aquarium like this. Everybody who comes by has just loved it. Uh, of course, one of the key secrets is the Kami Pier Blue. Uh, that formula has really clarified the water to an endless degree and created a wonderful environment for the fish and corals. It is a fantastic representation of what aquacultured fish can do, how they can look in an aquarium, and it is, it's gorgeous.